I am going to talk to you all about Moses the Intercessor. All right, so um, there were some qualities that I noticed about Moses that allowed me to see how he became an intercessor. I was wondering about the, the title of the subject and it was like, how can you be someone of that caliber and you actually get to that point? Um, so the first one that I noticed was that he was a very, very, very extremely meek person. Um, and Meek just basically means that you're mild, mild mannered. Um, people think that just because someone is humble, it makes them a weak person or it makes them a pushover, but that's completely not the case. It's more of something that gives you power. Yeah. And there were several occasions, if you read any of the books in the Bible, I mean any of the, from Exodus to Deuteronomy, you can see how he turned out to be such a meek person. And one such instance was actually when after after the after the Israelites had pressed Aaron to make make the golden calf in Exodus 32, 31, 35, in which that reads, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of the book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore, go, therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee, nevertheless, in the day, when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the cow, which Aaron made. So that's just one of the instances where, uh, where it shows that Moses was such a meek person. And there are several others, I'm trying to make sure I pay attention to money. Um, so when, if you actually look at this, it talks about, you can blot out my name. He was basically giving up his place where God said that he will enter into the kingdom of heaven and saying that the Israelites can take my place. He wasn't saying that he was such a great person like Jesus was, of course, but he was saying that there needs to be something more than an animal sacrifice. These animal sacrifices are not gonna do it we're gonna to need to give them again and again and again. But he was saying that there needs to be something more than the blood of an animal. Okay. Um, and this is basically the same heart that Jesus had when it was time for him to be crucified. Um, so if you do continue to read the books, um, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you'll see the different places. Even when Miriam and Aaron criticized him for they felt like like, like Moses was presenting himself as the only one that God spoke to. But of course we all know that that wasn't true. Um, and they, they also criticized him for marrying the Cushite woman. But all of, all of their persecution, um, even through even through how God made the provisions to, to the people. When they had the food and the water, they got tired of eating the bread and they complained to Moses about it. Or the water was bitter, they complained to Moses about it. But every time Moses was still in submission, no matter what it was, he didn't go and complain to anybody about it. He didn't go and gossip. He didn't wallow in the pain or anything like that. But he was still in submission the whole time. He was, he was either found bowing down or he was found praying. So every time he was yet a meek person. And it was something that he practiced over and over and over and over again. It was that kind of meekness that you have to have in the womb when, when, when the mother is pregnant. It was that deep, 
kind of meat is. Um, and even in Numbers 12, 3, it tells us how meek he was, that there was no one else like him in all of the land, so on. Um, and then the next point is that he understood the character of God. So, Basically, that means that Moses knew it would have been just for God to destroy the Israelites because it was one of his um, commandments. It was actually the second commandment in Exodus 20 that God said, do not have any graven images. And graven just means carved out images. Do not have any graven images. And even the first commandment was to not have any other gods before me. So they knew what the word was. They just wanted to go and do what they wanted to do because Moses was on top of the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights, and they didn't see him, so they felt like something else needed to be done. So they pressed Aaron to make that go to Cal for them. And the way that I say that Moses knew God's character was When he was on the mountain, God told them that the children of Israel, he told them basically everything that they did. They made the cow, and they are singing and dancing and doing everything that they're not supposed to be doing. And right at that point, Moses had to go in and pray for them because he knew how upset God was. So he prayed for them. He went in between the way he was supposed to. And... God calmed down, seemed like just a little bit, but then once Moses got down to the bottom of the mountain and got closest to them, that's when Moses had took on God's character. He ended up being waxed hot just the way God was waxed hot. So he took on basically the same character, the same form of attitude that God had. So um, and I actually want to read that. That's Exodus 32, 11 through 14. And that is, and Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax high against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with the mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief, he bring them out, he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Isaac, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and said, Unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of you, I will give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So, so Moses is, like I said, Moses was speaking to him and he started to pray, and he is saying, what about the Egyptians? What would the Egyptians say about you? What would they say about the God who is the Lord God Almighty, about the God who is so great? Or they're going to say that you brought your people to the wilderness just to slay them, just to kill them. How are they going to know that you're God if you do that? And then he went on and brought God's promise up, which is really a great thing to do, of course, when you're praying. You are reminded of God's word, and you actually pray his word back to him. Um, so that's what he did. He put, that into, he put that into action. He prayed his word back to him and said, don't you remember your promise? Which, of course, since he's God, he doesn't need reminding. But he had to say it anyway because they were about to be out of there. Um, 
literally. They were about to be out of there. He was that upset. And the last point is, Moses wanted all of God. So there came a point where God had told Moses to do something specific. He told him to speak to the rock so that the, because the children were complaining again, they wanted water and God told him to speak to the rock, but instead of speaking to the rock, he actually hit it twice. And his response was, I wanted to make sure that the water was gonna come out. So, so um, that was, he went, it's, it's almost like he went through all of that, all of those 40 plus years just to end up not going to the promised land because he was disobedient. But he actually knew everything that he was supposed to do. He was, he, he knew everything that he was supposed to do and then he um, disobeyed by that. So even, even though he was not going to enter into the promised land, he still had a work ethic that he was supposed to have. He still got up every day, clocked in, went and prayed, submitted, led the children, and clocked out, did it all over again, repeatedly, all the time, no matter what. So he still wanted God, he still wanted that relationship. He still continued to submit himself to God all along, no matter what it was. 